to me. Thank you. Thank you, John, for, for the sharing. Uh, I think for most of us, we've been uh, born here in Kenya, born in Africa. I can see, I think, some of us from, from Asia. Uh, there's this scripture in First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, which says that, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you are redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down uh, to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamp without uh, blemish. Um, now, just like uh, John has, uh, has has mentioned, that when we've been, um, uh, we've come from different cultural backgrounds and with different practices, and uh, and I think. What is more, most important is uh, that we should subject all our traditional and cultural practices in the light of God's word, not the other way around, not subjecting uh, Christian beliefs or God's word in the light of our traditions. May the Lord help us uh, so that uh, if, if, if each and every practice that we do or those things on the borderline is what does God's word uh, say. Now, I like... Um, to go to uh, straight to the questions now right from the chat I know somebody has um, summarized some of them now there's a question from Ken Njenga which I would like um, Pastor Wakaba Kemani is Pastor Wakaba Kemani uh, here no no I can he's... To answer this, this question by Ken Njenga who just no. Wakaba is not in you can only share the questions with Stanley Kebadi and Joseph Degwa. Okay. Let me ask uh, Stanley Kebadi to answer this question on uh, contem uh, the, the contemporary... Uh, now, he said, contemporary context we find ourselves in, especially cosmopolitan urban, urban settings. Now, that has so denigrated the so-called African traditions that we now have a generation that cannot identify with some of these ATR practices. In addition, a new popular culture propagated by westernization has seeped into our societies and churches. Should we be wary of it as well? Um, so in other words, we have uh, our youth who are so um, preoccupied with Western culture, uh, whether it's dressing, eating, looks, and so on. Um, now, and some of it, you know, I mean, like we know in our churches, sometimes you cringe, you know, you see, see somebody, a uh, young man dressed, you wonder whether that's a boy or a girl. Now, Brother Kivati, could you uh, could you comment on that? Kivati, are you there? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I can unmute myself. Yes, I'm here, um, and uh, uh, that question is rather long, but I think I can understand a little bit. Uh, the youth obviously have uh, problems by the fact that they are exposed so much to Western culture and to uh, new practices which are not even ATR, they are not African traditional uh, religious matters or even uh, cultural matters in, in that sense. And even if some of them would have been uh, some are, you know, fairly minor. But I think the Western culture has really infiltrated the youth of today. They do not know, or are they, they are not exposed, let me put it that way, to traditional, to African traditional cultures. Um, and therefore, since they do not get into those, particularly those who are in the urban, in the cosmo, cosmopolitan urban settings, they may not be exposed to traditional cultures, good or bad, and therefore what uh, they are infiltrated by is really the Western culture, through the social media, through all sorts of other things, including urbanization itself, which brings uh, people together who are not generally exposed, and therefore they are only exposed to Western uh, culture. I think there is a danger. Unfortunately, the younger people, the youth, and I, I don't know whether there are some here, but uh, the youth, obviously, being exposed to those things, sometimes they don't know what is good and what is bad. 
should we take this? If I hear that uh, there are some homosexual pastors, should I go with it? Probably nobody ever told them that that is wrong. And they may not even have read it in the scriptures to find that it is condemned by God. So those customs, I mean, somebody could be preaching to them and he is a homosexual pastor. And the things he said do not conform to the scriptures. And even some of the things that they, they know are condemned in the scripture, they might ignore and not teach people those. They concentrate on the things that they know they want to uh, propagate. So there is a, that danger. Uh, that uh, westernization has its own great problems. And I think the way I have felt about this over time is that the adults who have children have a great responsibility to teach their children what is good, what is Christian, what we should uh, emulate, and what we should ignore. I always say children have a brain that do not have very much, okay? And therefore, whatever you is put in them, whether by uh, the social media or whether by their parents or their peers, that is what they, they take. So they don't know whether it is good or whether it is bad. Nobody told them. We have a responsibility to teach our children and our grandchildren, if they are there, uh, what is right and what is wrong. I may not have said everything to answer that question, but so perhaps Ken Jenga could say if there is something else. And I will have only dealt with A for that matter. Yeah, maybe you can also tie up, uh, thank you for the but maybe also can tie up with B. Eh? Uh, the mm -hmm. second part of that question, uh, in Jenga's question is, how do we help new believers differentiate between uh, such beliefs and cultures? It's, um, for it in Jenga, the examples of Jews Jewish cultural practices, uh, which are parallels with African traditions, not quite sure, but I think one of it, um, I had opportunity to 2015 to visit Israel. One of the things that you find, if you are in the Mount of Olives, uh, is, uh, looking towards uh, the, uh, the, 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 the that big uh, uh, Islamic uh, temple. Now you you'd find that there is a big graveyard, you know. Now, and you find so many Jews going there to the graveyard to, to, to go and pray. Now, um, they, 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 uh, just almost like um, just all African just going also to, to the grave to, to go and, you know, to some, some, um, uh, some rites uh, there. Now, how, how do we help people to differentiate between what is, uh, what is culture, beliefs? I know uh, John mentioned, but um, maybe you can weigh in on that. I think the first thing to understand is that not all Jewish people are Christians, even though Jesus was a Jew himself. But they have abandoned and refused to accept Jesus Christ as their savior. And therefore, they may have continued with traditions that are not led by biblical uh, uh, patterns, which we have been told by the scriptures. So if they are going to their ancestors to get blessings from them, like might have happened long before, they, they, that, that, that is not allowed in the, in the New Testament. Because Jesus does not teach us to be going to people to get blessings, particularly people who have passed on already. And I know, obviously, many of us have lost uh, parents, have lost uh, other relatives. And I think this question even becomes very difficult when people are going to... Uh, uh, a grave site to take flowers to bless others even to take food and so on and so forth or even to meditate uh, and to say that their ancestors visited them this is all wrong and therefore the only way we can really know is to be taught by people who are credible who understand the scripture and even to read the scripture itself and to understand it and that is in particular true for those uh, perhaps for the younger people who who, who may not know any better. I mean, if I tell my mm -hmm. grandchild, now let's go and worship at uh, Langata Cemetery, that's what, where you are so and so was buried, she will follow me. So mm -hmm. I have a responsibility to tell them that they shouldn't and that it is, it is not uh, called by the Go Jesus for it. So, uh, again, uh, if the question is not clear, answered, somebody else can uh, add. Yeah, I think, um, and so for sake of time, maybe... Uh, that, that that may arise again in maybe some other questions down here. Let me ask uh, Ndegwa, uh, please um, answer number C, uh, you can read there, um, about transporting the dead. Uh, 
Yeah, please, please, please comment on that, Brother Ndegwa. Somebody can unmute Ndegwa if he's mute, mute, muted. Joseph Degwa. Joseph Degwa. Transport and mute himself. For burial in their ancestral homeland. Degwa, are you able to unmute? Maybe as he walks out, maybe John, you can, uh, you can. Um, yeah, uh, I, maybe as he is trying to unmute. Joseph, are you are you there? Okay, this one, by the way, I, like I said, the topic is very wide. And I therefore did not spend a lot of time with examples. So these questions are very good. But I've written a book called Christianity and Culture. And it's distributed by, it's distributed by Scripture Union. Scripture Union have a bookshop at the um, St. Paul's University on the Tomboya side, church house, Tomboya side, just before you cross to the railway station. And they also have another bookshop at Hallingham, behind the shop station. If you pick the book, you will see I've added the whole chapter on death and death customs. Let me say quickly three things. You need to understand that the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That means the moment a Christian dies, from that moment, immediately, he is not in that body. He has gone to be with the Lord. So when we bury the body, we are not burying the person. We are burying where he used to say, we call them remains. So we must be careful. You can't address, we cannot talk to the dead body like, mom, you have left me. That's really a joke. She left a long time ago. That body is not your mother. So although traditionally it is done, the scriptures won't allow you. We cannot even use the language, I'm escorting, I'm escorting him, my last res escort. You can't escort somebody who left. They left a long time ago. The body, you are accurate taking the remains for burial. Now, when you understand then that, you understand this taking of the bodies to church or not taking, there's nothing you are doing. All burial customs have no benefit to the dead. They are for the living. We call it closure. Psychologists call it closure. So you want to do whatever you can do to help the family that is mourning to mourn such that they are able to get relief. But don't do things in the process that make them think that there is something they can do that can affect the, the, the dead. Or they can get any blessings from the dead person by what they do to their body. Thank you. Okay, and, and maybe John, you can also just... just well, uh, uh, I think it should not take long. Uh, just a case about First Corinthians nine twenty-two about Paul saying that I become I become, uh, I become like uh, all the old men, just like a Jew, laughter, and I, got, uh, I I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may shed blood. Uh, the light of what you said. Uh, yeah. You comment on that. That's a very good verse. It means that if you come to preach. To a new tribe. Don't like Hudson Taylor went to China. Don't dress yourself like the way the white people dress. Become like a Chinese. But the belief system that Hudson Taylor taught the new faith. But he was wearing the clothes of the Chinese. So that's what Paul is talking about. I became all things to all men so that I may save some. But that did not include I'm moving away from the belief in Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask uh, Brother Kivatri to yes. uh, number, num number four. Uh, the question by Wamuyu In case of honoring our families, do we have to give a token to our families, especially the men earlier, earlier when our sons are going to become teachers? Especially as it's practiced in the region of central Kenya. Um, to please. Well, I haven't thought about this particular. You can hear me. I haven't thought, as I'm saying, about this particular question or issue for that matter. 
but I don't think that there is any spiritual or Christian requirement that we give tokens to our families, especially the men, earlier when our sons going to for circumcision. What would happen if I don't give? Is there any curse? Is there any disadvantage in not giving them? Obviously, I may want to honor them, but not because my son is going to get circumcised uh, or anything of that matter. Uh, I don't think that this has any spiritual uh, connotation, and if it does, I may be corrected. But I think uh, if, if you want to respect them in any way, but it is not a, a necessity. I don't think it is a necessity. Uh, actually, Stanley, it is a necessity. If you don't, if, you, if your son does not go, for example, among the Kikuyus, to get permission from the Aniko before they are circumcised, the fear is that they will bleed, they might bleed to death. That's why you never went for circumcision before going to clear with, your, with the brother of your mother. The other day, a friend of mine got cancer. And he was told, although he got circumcised 14 years ago, he was told it is because he skipped that matter that cancer has come his way. So the idea of those things that have to do with circumcision is a belief system. That's why, like, Stanley is asking, if you feel you must do it, it tells you you are in another religion. What happened to Joseph? Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you John. I, I am saying there is no spiritual Christian requirement. No. Thank you. Thank you. Can I be heard now? Yes, very clearly. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here next to the lake. I just wanted to uh, just uh, make some additional point from uh, an economic pers perspective hmm. on this, John. If you are really going to make your, to take your son for circumcision, hmm. he, in most cases, you be in a certain place for about two weeks. So that means there is some expenses on the medical fee, the food and accommodation, and sometimes facilitation for the teachers who will be taking through this, uh, the initiates, the teaching through the curriculum. But you have to be very careful as a Christian to get to first understand who the teachers are. are they Christ, is it organized by Christians? Otherwise, if you allow the, the elders to take over, which is happening now, you will land, you land your, your, your son into problems. I had the other day an associate uh, who had taken a son, and then imagine this, this was in, in one of the Christian forums. And the young boys were told, make sure you don't come in to contact with the girl until after two two months. After two months, you are okay. We were surprised, yet this was a Christian forum. So you have to scrutinize and carry out due diligence to whoever the, the teachers are. 